Do you believe you have the power to change society? If I had asked myself this question, I would have definitely said no. And the reason why I can tell you this is because I was a failing student who didn't have anything better to do than play this game called League of Legends on my computer. I was known as that kid who never handed in his homework. I would never have been able to imagine that 10 years later, I would be sitting across the seat from CEOs and board executives discussing crucial issues about the company. But that's what happened. Today, I'm going to be talking about how me and my friends changed a whole company. Through this, I hope to share four lessons I learned, which changed my mindset and allowed me to change society. With this change in mindset, I believe that anyone, regardless of who they are, what age they are, will be able to change society in some way. First lesson, don't limit yourself. So when I was in middle school, I lived in a city called Jakarta in Indonesia. I was a failing student. I loved playing tennis. I loved doing uh, games, but I was a failing student. I did considerably bad in my grades. And so time passed and I came back to Japan. And one day I was looking through my phone when I found an interesting advertisement. It was by a company called Uglena Co., which was a company that worked to solve malnutrition all around the world and was a bio venture company that was based in Japan. So looking at this advertisement, I was reminded of my experience in Indonesia because that advertisement had called for youth members that had a social issue in mind that they wanted to solve. The illegal deforestation, the air pollution, the slums, all of these experiences came back in my mind. And then followed a thought. Should I apply? No, 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 no way. There is no way you're gonna be able to pass. And be realistic, I reprimanded myself. And so I let the advertisement pass. But for the following days, for the following weeks, I kept on seeing that same advertisement over and over and over. And finally, I just gave up and I decided to give it a try. But let me, let me be completely honest with you. I was 0% sure that I was, I was going to pass. I had zero hopes of passing. Because how can a guy who can't even hand in his homework be able to pass, right? So with that, I wrote a short paragraph on what I thought and I applied. A week later, the result was at my post. And to my surprise, I passed. And a week after that, I was called for an interview. And that went well too. And a month later, I was now officially a member of Uglena & Co. I always thought that I wasn't good enough, that I couldn't do anything meaningful in my life. But I merely realized that I was limiting myself, that I was my own enemy. So don't limit yourself. Try and grab the opportunity in front of you because that way you'll be able to find the potential in you and that way you'll be able to change society. Second lesson, everyone has something to offer. So a few months later, I had the first meeting. And let me tell you what, this was the most shocking experience in my life. Because around me were these extremely ambitious youth who were absolutely determined to change society. I'm going to eliminate all plastic waste from the ocean. I'm going to achieve sustainable partnership all around the world to end all wars. And listening to this, I couldn't but ask myself, is it okay for me to be here? Because for me, it was kind of like an accident being chosen. I didn't actually think of changing society, right? So I lost my confidence. And for the first few meetings, I was unable to express my opinions while other members actively participated. I was usually silent, just nodding along to what other members said. In one meeting, as I was fake nodding as usual, one of the members asked me for an opinion. I was surprised because it was such a sudden thing. But I had no choice but to share my honest thoughts. So I did. 
And I thought to myself, oh well, everyone's probably laughing inside their mind. What a dumb comment it was. But the reaction was totally unexpected. Hey, I didn't realize you were such a good speaker. The way you talk was really convincing. Wow, your idea was really logical. I think we should do as Yuto says. I was stunned because the reactions were so different from what I had initially anticipated. So I gradually gained my confidence. Me being a good speaker, the guy who is scared of talking? Maybe my voice does matter. Maybe it's okay to say my opinions. Until then, I had nev never thought that I could be able to contribute in such a group. I never thought that I had any strengths or any specialties. Everyone has their own unique strengths. For people who don't think they have any, it's just they haven't realized it yet. So don't give up on yourself. Try finding the hidden speciality that is within you. Be confident because everyone has something to offer. Third lesson, work together. So I started engaging in discussion more because I became more confident. And we set on our first big proposal. We identified an issue with the lack of youth engagement in environmental problems. And so we thought of many, many ideas, but we came to a really fun idea where every time a student carries out an environmentally friendly act that they can collect points for that and compete with their peers. I was in charge of compiling the proposal and I was pretty confident in my idea. After literally days of no sleeping, I was able to finalize it. And so one day we brought our idea to a company that can bring it to reality. Our hopes, to be honest, were pretty high. But the next moment we were knocked off our feet. It's too ambitious. You guys have to think it out more. You guys are still teenagers. It's too difficult for you. We were bombarded by these words and I was stunned because our days and days of effort have been turned away with a simple no. I felt as if we were doomed and that's why I gradually lost my motivation to move forward. I gave up and I started to distance myself away from the other members and stop participating in the discussions and activities. One day, I received a call from a member called Tonto and he, he encouraged me to come back. But, you know, I was still wounded. I was still hurt. So I told him I couldn't. But since that day, almost every single day, he kept on calling me over and over and over. And I was defiant at the start, but gradually my perception changed because I realized that I had been trying to change society all by myself, all alone. But what I didn't realize was that around me was an ambitious team who was always there to help. Let's change society together, not alone. Tanto's words resonated in my heart. And so with that, I was back in the team. Changing society on your own is a difficult thing to do. You feel overburdened. You feel as if no one is around to help. But as a team, it's possible. That way you can help each other when one is in need. You can work towards a common goal. So you don't have to do it alone to change society. Find some friends and work together. Four, don't be afraid of failure. So we said on our next big proposal and one day we were discussing at the company when we realized something that Uglena used plastic for its products. And we, so we thought to ourselves, we seem to care about changing society, but what about ourselves? We have to change ourselves first. So with that, we came to an idea that we're going to eliminate all plastic products from Uglena. And the next day I decided to share this idea with some of my friends in school to get some feedback. What? Are you serious? Is that even possible? You guys are out of your mind. The adults are going to think you're crazy. With these reactions, I was reminded of our failed project, the cold reactions we were met with. But this time it was different 
because I was also reminded of the emotions I felt when I was rejected at the first. The despair, the hopelessness, the pain in my heart. And this was all important because this was what pushed me forward. This told me that I can't give up, that I must stand back up and prove them wrong. And so with that, different from last project, I didn't give up. And our team set on our proposal. And so we made sure not to make the same mistakes as last time. We made sure that we spent time making tens of drafts, revising and being meticulous about every single detail. We spent time negotiating and discussing with adults, seeking for maximum support. And finally, the day came. A few of our members announced a proposal to the whole executive board of Euglena. And let me be honest with you, I was so nervous. Our hearts pounded as we waited for a response. And finally, we acknowledge your commitment and effort. Let's do it. Ismo-san, the CEO of Euglena exclaimed. That moment, we had done it. We, our proposal had passed. So it was officially decided in May last year that Euglena would reduce 50% of its plastic products by 2021 and eliminate all plastic products in the near future. This was the moment we had succeeded in bringing change to a whole company. Failure is scary because you feel as if all your efforts have been denied at that spot. But the emotions you feel when you fail, the anger, the despair, the humiliation, that's what's moved you forward in times of great difficulty. And you learn from your failures. You get stronger each and every time you fail. So don't be afraid of it. Embrace it and always challenge yourself. So after the plastic project, we scored many more successes. In one of the stores in the Ishigaki Islands, we succeeded in reducing half of its food waste and garbage emissions. Based on our proposal, the MIE research base was changed from fossil fuel to renewable energy. What next? The government. Upon multiple discussions with the current environmental minister, we are working on making a platform where youth voices can be reflected in environmental policies. Our new chapter of changing society has started. So I've learned four important lessons, which has changed my mindset and allowed me to change society. But let's stop for a second and go back to who I was at the start. Because I was a gamer. I was a tennis maniac. I was a failing student. And I was known as that guy who never handed in his homework. And I thought that I would never in a million, even in a billion years, be able to change society. And it seems that countless youth feel the same way. Because in Japan, in fact, according to the Japan Foundation in 2019, only 18% of youth feel that they have the power to change society. So, in this situation, how is I able to change? And more importantly, how can you change? One, don't limit yourself. Stop telling yourself that you can't change society. Because you can, so believe in yourself. Two, everyone has something to offer. For people out there who don't think they are special, who don't think that they have any strengths at all, that's not true. It's just you haven't found it yet. So try and find the hidden potential that is within you. Three, work together. Changing society on your own is a difficult thing to do. And if you can't do that, don't worry. Find some friends and work together. Four, don't be afraid of failure. Learn from your failures and persevere. These changes in mindset will help you to bring change to society in some way. So, let me address the question I asked at the start of the talk. Do you believe that you have the power to change society? Yes, yes I do. And I firmly believe that every single person on this planet does with a little change in mindset. Thank you.